We tried it for a decade. It had no effect whatsoever. So not only is Biden advocating for a policy that doesn't do anything, we know for a fact this isn't even theory. We don't even have to say it probably wouldn't work. We know it won't work because we already did it and it had no effect at all. He's advocating for a failed policy that all the data points in the direction of it having no effect on gun violence in the form of mass shootings or gun crimes in general. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Now you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we've got a really great one for you today. Of course, uh, haven't had a whole lot of time because we haven't even had a show since the new president, President Joe Biden, who is the most transformational houseplant in American history. Uh, since Joe Biden has been installed in office, we have not had to do a Daily Dose of Stupid. We haven't had an episode, so I feel it is only appropriate that he gets to be the honorary subject of today's Daily Dose of stupid, and this comes on the heels, of course, of the two mass shootings that have happened just recently. The one, uh, of course, both horrible incidents, one taking place in the Atlanta metropolitan area, not too far from our own home state of Alabama, another one taking place, of course, in Boulder, Colorado. But this is the address that Joe Biden had in response to this, and so we'll take a look at a couple clips from that. Watch. While we're still waiting for more information regarding the shooter, his motive, the weapons he used, the guns, the magazines, the weapons, the modifications that apparently have taken place to those weapons that are involved here. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future and to urge my colleagues in the House and Senate to act. We can ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines in this country once again. I got that done when I was a senator. It passed. It was law for the longest time. And it brought down these mass killings. We should do it again. All right, well, some real bad faulty logic there. Now, I'm going to take the obvious low-hanging fruit, and then I'm going to move on to the, the better arguments or the ones that are not really challenging to overcome, but more so... The idea that just because we used to do it or because it was the law for a long time at one point is a reason that we should enact it again, that's just stupid. I mean, for about 84 years, slavery was the law of the land. It was permissible in the United States. We don't do that. Jim Crow, for decades, was the law of the land. At one point in World War II, we were interning Japanese Americans. That was, that was okay, according to the law. Uh, just because we did it at one point does not mean it is a good idea. Just because it was the law for a extended period of time does not make it a good idea. And so let's actually get into the meat and potatoes of what he's talking about, which is his actual rationale behind this. Um, but ultimately, I think the most revealing thing in that clip is the way that he presents it, his introduction to it. It wasn't so much that he's saying, let's go ahead and get some gun control through. What is actually far more telling is how he started out the clip. Do you, do you realize what he said there? He said, we're still waiting on details to come out about the shooting. Of course, talking about the one in Boulder, Colorado. We don't really know what's going on. We don't know what kind of gun he used. We don't know what kind of magazines he used. We don't know if this thing was illegally altered or not. We don't know whether he purchased the gun legally. But you know what we do know? We're going to go ahead and go through with gun control anyway. See, this is the funny thing that's about this, is Joe Biden is saying the quiet part out loud. And what's even more hilarious is you can tell this is a teleprompter speech. This is, what, this is not Joe Biden spitballing. He's reading this off of a teleprompter. And so the Democrats, not just Joe Biden, but this is his staff and, and people that are around him that are wanting to make these policies a reality, they're, it's pretty ballsy, but they're basically openly admitting to yeah, really, this tragedy is just a vehicle for us to get through the gun control that we've always wanted. Because if it was about this shooting, the reaction would be, well, we'll wait, we'll look at the evidence, we'll see what comes out, and then we'll see what we can do to prevent things like this in the future. This is Joe Biden saying literally, 
this is his wording, not mine. We don't have to wait one more minute, minute, let alone another hour. I don't know why hour. It would have been I would have gone with day if I were writing that speech. But regardless, you know, just that's a stylistic approach. That he says we're not going to wait another minute to gather more evidence, to look at it, to see if this law would actually have any effect on whether or not this shooting would take place or or if it would do anything to prevent these shootings. You know, Marco Rubio pointed out, and I've I've made this point several times, but it's because it's a good one. Marco Rubio pointed out in one of the presidential debates that of the past 20 years, there has not been a single piece of gun legislation proposed that would have prevented the mass shooting that they were proposed in the wake of. In other words, the mass shooting, which was used as a rationale for, guys, we've got to pass this gun legislation right now. We have to stop these mass shootings. Not a single one had a provision in it that would have prevented the shooting that they were claiming to try to prevent in the future. And you know what happened? The Washington Post fact checker fact checked him. And the ranking that they gave him was a Geppetto. They went through every mass shooting of the past 20 years in which legislation was proposed afterward to prevent a mass shooting like that one in the future, and they could not find a single one where the proposed legislation would have even theoretically stopped the shooting that they were claiming they were trying to prevent in the future. And this one's no different. But now the Democrats are openly admitting to it. We don't care what the details are. We don't care what the facts are. doesn't really matter to us. We just want to push through the gun legislation that we've been trying to push through for years, and we're going to use this tragedy as an opportunity to do that. Can you imagine what would happen if Republicans were saying, yeah, we don't really need to worry about this one event in time or or whatever. We don't really care so much about that. We're just going to try to shove through the legislation that we've had written down for years. And, you know, the facts are really not that big a deal, whether or not they lay out any kind of case for this. I mean, this is the MO. This is what Democrats have done the entire time, which is they try to strike when the emotions are high because they think that that's a good time to go ahead and push the legislation through as fast as possible. In fact, not only do they not wait for the details or not care what the details of a shooting are, not only that, they specifically would rather push the legislation through before the details come out. Because that's when emotions are the highest, before you know things. See, as a general rule, it's a very dumb thing for a person in an emotional fever pitch to make decisions. When you are emotional, you tend to make bad decisions. You are not being run by your logic and your reason, and you're not carefully weighing out the evidence. That's what the Democrats want. It's not a bug, it's a feature. That's part of the design. They are wanting your emotions to be high. They are wanting you to not be thinking clearly because then you're more likely to agree to the insane gun control legislation that they have proposed. That's how this works. It's not an accident that it happens to be when people are super emotional and and traumatized by the shooting, uh, the, the nation's mourning with the people that are victims and the families of the victims of the shooting, that, that's not a mistake. That's not a happenstance. That's the way that they want it. And Joe Biden is admitting to this. But let's get to the actual underlying thing that he's talking about here, because he did make a claim there. And if that claim is correct, it's not a bad argument to make, which is, look, we've done this before. In 1994, from, from the period of 1994 to 2004, because it was a 10-year sunset clause, we in this country banned assault weapons. Now, granted, as I've said many times on the show, I won't go into it again, an assault weapon is an imaginary classification that pretty much just means a scary-looking gun. It mostly has to do with features that do not make a gun more deadly. Did it actually lead to less mass shootings? Because that's what President Joe Biden just claimed. He says, look, we did it before. We did it in 1994. It was when I was a senator. And when we did that, we had less mass shootings. Is that correct? Well, let's look at the evidence, shall we? This comes from Politico, and they were doing a a study on mass shootings and the rate of mass shootings and how frequently they occur. So this is the mass shootings per 100 million, so this, this is adjusted for population, and it goes all the way from 1976 to 2016. So that's a, that's a pretty big range. That's 40 years there. 
I mean, it's just kind of all over the place. Our rate of mass shooting stays pretty much constant because they are so rare. Now, you may have one year where there's one more mass shooting and that makes the stats jump up a lot, but that's because these things are so rare that any little bitty thing that happens at the stats is reflected in a huge way percentage-wise. But nonetheless, you look at that 40-year trend, stays pretty much the same. Now, let's look at the same graph with the assault weapons ban. That's the assault weapons ban from 1994 to 2004. Doesn't really look any different than the other graphs. So Joe Biden's claim that there were less mass public shootings back when the assault weapons ban was on, it's simply not true. You look at it, whether you're looking at the bars, you're looking at the amount of mass shootings we had, or you're looking at the five-year yearly average, there's just not a massive jump in mass shootings outside of that assault weapons ban or or in the you know the year or two if you even if you give it a little grace you uh, look at the year before the year after that kind of thing there's just no discernible difference between when we had an assault weapons ban and when we didn't so joe biden is patently wrong on that the data very clearly shows that but what you will have from the left and i've actually already heard this point while talking about this today okay well the thing is it didn't actually make less mass shootings, but what happened is mass shootings got more deadly. On the surface, you could say that that claim at least kind of appears to be true. Granted, there's not a drastic difference, and like I said, we're talking about numbers that are so infinitesimally small in a nation this large that it, it's very difficult to compare data, but this is a graphic, again, from Politico, same study, that showed the uh, mass shootings per 100 million, and, and these are victims of mass shootings, not just the mass shooting incidents. And now what you'll see is, um, after about 2006-ish, 2007, something like that, there is an uptick. This same study in Politico, uh, you, you can look at, at other graphics that kind of attest to this, uh, they even said, uh, the same thing from Politico, said that they didn't find that there was any significant contributing factor of the assault weapons ban to this. From Politico, the rise in the average number of victims also raises a number of other questions about mass public shootings. Foremost among them, why have they become more deadly since the mid-2000s? It may be tempting to conclude that this increase is because of the expiration of the assault weapons ban in 2004. After all, the increase began shortly after the ban ended. But the limited research that's been done suggests it had little short-term impact on gun violence. And so that's not even just talking about gun, you know, mass shootings as events. It's talking about gun violence as a whole. And the, the research that has been done on it simply does not point to that conclusion. And, and keep in mind, Politico is not exactly red state. I mean, it's, it's not a, a right-leaning publication. And they continue on, that's probably not a popular conclusion. But the available evidence suggests that strengthening or weakening gun laws would not significantly affect the incidence or severity of mass public shootings. For example, studies examining the bans on large capacity magazines and right to carry concealed firearm laws have found they would have little to no effect on mass public shootings. And one of the things that they're talking about here is state by state comparisons where there are some states like California where assault weapons have been banned since 1989, the year that I was born. So 31 years now they've had assault weapons bans, and yet, because it's a big state like Florida, like Texas, they have, an out, they, they have a bigger share of mass shootings. They have about the same one as states that do not have an assault weapons ban. They have about the same that don't have a magazine capacity limit. And so you do a state-by-state -state comparison, and there's just no correlation between how strict your gun control laws are and the rate of mass shootings which you have. And so that's what the data shows. Another thing to consider that would also suggest that assault weapons are not the cause of this is this graphic by Statista that looked at all of the mass shootings between 1982 and March 2021, the month we are currently in. And if you look at that, these are the types of weapons that are used in mass shootings. Shotguns at the bottom with 26, rifles in second place with 48, and handguns has a commanding lead almost double what rifles have. So handguns are by far the preferred method 
of killing people and, and nobody is actually talking about banning handguns. And another thing that I want you to notice too, if you see that little highlighted portion there in the bottom right, rifles include non-automatic, semi-automatic, and illegally modified rifles. And so that's another thing that you have to consider. That rifles category, despite being in second place, it isn't even talking about assault weapons. It's not talking about your AR-15s. It includes that, of course, as well. But if somebody just wants to go up there with a hunting rifle, if, if somebody commits a mass shooting with a 30-30, which has happened before, we, we've seen people use hunting rifles, which again is kind of an imaginary designation, but there are some rifles that are more commonly used for hunting at least. We see that that does take place from time to time. And so, even if you have the broad sweeping category of just all rifles as opposed to assault weapons, it's still only about half. And so the idea that banning your AR-15s and your AK-47s and every other assault rifle, that that is somehow going to curtail mass shootings or whether or not how deadly they are, I'm, I'm sorry, the data simply does not back that up. And so... Because of that, there's just no reason to believe anything, any part of what Joe Biden is saying here, because that category includes all rifles, not just assault rifles. And here's the thing, too. This isn't even theoretical. Normally, when we're debating things about politics, there is some level of theory involved in it. For example, America has never had socialized medicine. We understand that there would be complications that would arise here that would not arise in other countries. For example, we have to pay for a military, other countries really just kind of rely on the United States to be the police of the world, and because we make the world more secure, they don't have to worry about military expenses as much. That's wrong, but it's what they do. And so because of that, us bearing the cost of that plus universal socialized medicine would be even harder on us than other countries. We're much larger than these countries and more diverse, which creates other problems when you're talking about creating a healthcare industry that is run by the government. But we don't know that for sure. This is kind of dealing in the realm of theory to a degree. We can point to data that, you know, deductively increases the likelihood of our conclusion, but we've never actually tried socialized medicine in America, so we can't say that with absolute certainty. This is not that. We tried it for a decade. It had no effect whatsoever. So not only is Biden advocating for a policy that doesn't do anything, we know for a fact this isn't even theory. We don't even have to say it probably wouldn't work. We know it won't work because we already did it and it had no effect at all. He's advocating for a failed policy that all the data points in the direction of it having no effect on gun violence in the form of mass shootings or gun crimes in general. He's simply wanting this to go through because it ideologically suits him not because the policy actually works. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel Otherwise, you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.